Welcome to Electronline. Not many of us remember what it's like to have a mechanical watch. I haven't worn one in many, many years. But if you ever open one up, those were quite mechanical wonders. Inside, you'll see a spring which drives what we call a balance wheel. A balance wheel which twists back and forth, and therefore the, the relationship to the torsional pendulum to keep the time accurate. Let's say we have one of those balance wheels, which of course is set up between two very small crystals to minimize the friction at the axis of rotation. And let's say that that balance wheel has a mass of 22 milligrams and a radius of 4.2 millimeters. And here's a drawing of that. Notice that most of the mass is on the very rim of that wheel, so we can say that the moment of inertia is very close to mR squared. What we're trying to find here is if the frequency of this watch is 2.5 Hertz, because typically mechanical watches will tick five times per second, once for each half complete cycle of the, not, it's not rotational motion, but the twisting back and forth motion, that gives us a frequency of 2.5 Hertz, and we're supposed to find the torsion constant of that, or the torsional constant as we usually call it. All right, how do we do that? Well, let's start off with the equation of the frequency. We can say that the frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of the torsional constant divided by the moment of inertia. Which means that we're going to have to find the moment of inertia. Let's go ahead and do that first. I is equal to M, which is 22 grams, 0 point, oh, 22 milligrams. Well, let's right here. Let's call that 22 times 10 to the minus 6 kilograms because there's a thousand grams in a kilogram and a thousand milligrams in a gram and then we multiply that times the radius squared which is 4.2 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. Well that's quite a small moment of inertia for that small balance wheel. That gives us 22e to the 6 minus times 4.2 e to the 3 minus squared at equals, so that's a pretty small quantity, that's uh, 3.88 times 10 to the minus 10 kilogram meter squared. All right, that's our moment of inertia. Now let's solve this equation for kappa, the torsional constant. So let's square both sides. We have the frequency squared is equal to 1 over 4 pi squared times kappa divided by the moment of inertia. Solving that for kappa, this is equal to frequency squared times i times 4 pi squared. Now all we have to do is plug in everything that we know. This is equal to 2.5 hertz quantity squared, and of course hertz is typically written with a capital H, hertz, there we go. Multiply it times the moment of inertia, which is 3.88 times 10 to the minus 10. That would be kilograms meters squared times 4 and times pi squared. All right, let's see what we get. So times 2.5 squared and times 4 and times pi squared equals. And the result is... Torsional constant is equal to 9.58 times 10 to the minus 8. Now, units-wise, that would be Newton meters divided by radians, per radian. So that's really the proper units. Of course, we don't have to write divide by radian because radian is not a, a unit, but at least it gives you some perspective. So torque divided by radians, and that gives us the constant we're looking for. And that's how it's done.